In this study, Remron was uh, found to be effective in the prophylactic treatment of chronic ta tension type headaches. So 24 patients were studied in a randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled crossover trial. And they were given Remron for eight weeks, separated by a two-week washout period. And then they were crossed over, either placebo or Remron. And it was found that people on patients taking Remron had a reduction in headache frequency, headache duration, and headache intensity with reduced area under the curve by more than a third. So based on this, it was suggested that Remron, uh, among the newer drugs, may be effective for the treatment of uh, tension type headaches. And this is just some of the graphical data that was presented uh, to support it. You can see the improvement of, area, of the area under the curve. With Remeron, you have the triangles, black in color, okay, compared to placebos, which were the zero. And I think the separation at five weeks on and on. Of course, there are side effects. Every drug has side effects. And for Remeron, the biggest side effect, I think, is drowsiness. In fact, for that reason, we often use for people who have insomnia as part of their, of their disease process. Okay? And uh, the other, some of the other things that we see with Remeron, dizziness, weight gain, dry mouth. And uh, they measured, measured a whole bunch of uh, things, and they found that, that the people who are taking this drug were more likely to have a uh, decrease in their visual analog pain scale than placebo. And same for the verbal uh, rating pain scale. You know, it's significantly more likely to have decreased pain compared to placebo. And also the number of days free of headaches was also statistically significant for this group of patients. Again, with, with this class of medications, one of the most common things we see is drowsiness, and then followed by dryness of mouth, increased weight or appetite. This uh, study uh, by Olson's group looked at comipramine okay, and mianserin, right? and they found that comipramine uh, was more effective than placebo, as was mianserin, uh, again for measuring the pain scale. Right? It was more effective in lowering the, the visual analog scale for pain than placebo. This is the, uh, showing that the reduction in pain scale as well as greater than 50% per percent reduction in pain scales. For another class of uh, new medications called SNRIs, where venlafaxine was one of the first to come out, there is only level 3 evidence uh, from this study done in 2000 for the, for the efficacy of venlafaxine for the treatment of uh, tension-type headaches. So with this, you can see that in this trial, uh, after two to three months, there was a separation with the headaches uh, being sig more significant than placebo uh, for patients taking Effexor or Venlaxaphine. Okay, and then this is to show that there is a change in the moderate to severe headache frequency of, patient, of these patients on Venlaxaphine as well. The SSRIs have been suggested and they have been used in, in various cases and there's been quite a few trials looking at whether SSRIs was effective for tension type headaches. Uh, because tricyclics and, and some of the older antidepressants are certainly first line, so, but they have, as you can see, not inconsiderable side effects. So SSRI was suggested that maybe these, these patients uh, would respond to SSRIs. However, the evidence is not so good for SSRIs. In this study, also by Olson, a tricyclic like amitriptyline was effective in reducing chronic tension type headaches, but not citaprolam both in headache frequency, the intake of LG6, headache intensity, amitriptyline was superior to uh, citaprolam. Another study, this is looking at fluvoxamine. They received placebo, and again, looking at the frequency of the headache, the pain severity, and analgesic, com an analgesic consumption, both drugs were beneficial in the treatment of chronic tension-type headaches, but Fluoxamine, non-depressed patients with more severe headaches responded best to fluoxamine, whereas mianserine was more effective in the treatment of depressed patients with moderate headaches. In sertraline, the, the conclusion for this study was that the reduction in headache index and percentage reduction in frequency of headache was not significant in drug treatment group uh, versus placebo. 
And this looking at uh, this uh, study uh, was a Cochrane-based review looking at uh, five SSI, uh, uh, five F SSRIs over thirteen studies, and their conclusion again, in patients with chronic tension type headaches, SSRIs are less efficacious than tricyclic antidepressants. Now, this drug tizanidine is not available in Singapore, but it's a central acting muscle relaxant. Okay, and it has been used in the states to I must say pretty good effect. In this study, randomized double-blind crossover uh, controls, tizanidine was more effective in the days of headache-free, number of analgesics consumed, and the, no, the dose of trial medications needed. And they, they suggested that the results of the present trial suggest that it's effective in the treating of chronic tension-type headaches in women. Then there's this whole controversy about botulinum toxin because, as we know, now Botox or botulinum toxin uh, has been used for many things and, and even in the, 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 the world of headache it's, it's been used for treating migraines the evidence for migraines is there and there have been quite a few trials now many of them showing efficacy in migraine many but not all the same trials were done to look at the efficacy of borderline toxins in chronic ten tension type headaches but in chronic tension type headaches unfortunately it doesn't look so good in this study you know uh, where Silberstein, uh, my previous mentor, looked at three, 300 patients with uh, chronic tension type headaches. They found that uh, in the number of tension type headache free days per month, there was no statistical, no statistical difference between placebo and four Botox groups. The four Botox groups were uh, zero units, 50 units, 100 units, 150 units over five sites. And again, in another study done in 2004, looking at Botox and then the effect 12 weeks later, there was no significant difference between Botox and placebo in the decrease of headache intensity on the visual analog scale. All the mean number of headache days, all the headache hours per day, all the number of analgesics taken per week. Okay, so essentially no effect. Another study done in 2004 on a 112 patients. Uh, these were patients with uh, where they were injected in multiple uh, pericranial muscles. And again, there was the conclusion was there is no significant difference between the treated group and placebo in any of the things that was looked at. You know, headache days, number of days with intake of analgesics, etc. And then yet another study done in 2001. So I think it's probably safe to say that uh, with all these studies that have been done, uh, botulinum toxin, for whatever effect it has on, botuline, uh, on, on migraines, which seems to be somewhat effective, uh, on tension-type headaches, at this point in time, there doesn't seem to be strong evidence for its use in this group of patients. So with that, uh, I think I end my talk.